Saka can play intricately. So he can have about five men around him and still play properly. Odegaard the same. Um, Partey the same. But when you take a look at Martinelli, Martinelli needs space to run in. Who's the manager? Cooper. Cooper is the manager. Now let's take a look on the previous matches now. After that, matches after that. Now the match after that, the manager is Nuno. That's when they sacks Cooper and now Nuno take over. And it's going to take an individual to inspire the different teams to go forward and win this match. And I believe that Woods, we need to take a big, big mindful of Woods. And this is where I would start two in midfield. So Arsenal is going to be playing Nottingham Forest on Tuesday. And there's lots of reason why we should look forward to this. First being that we've already beaten Nottingham Forest so far this season. They were our first match of the Premier League season. And we've already beat them 2-1. If you remember soccer with that goal, with that curling effort into that far corner. It's like an Aaron Robin type of goal. And when he scored that, everyone was guessed because we're saying that, yes, it looks like soccer is bringing his old form into the new season. And with that type of goal... That's one of his best so far we've seen. So everyone was excited. Everyone was happy. Everyone was gassed um, for both Arsenal and Saka going on forward into the future season, into the season ahead. But um, going into the season, we see that he kind of fell off the pace a bit. Um, also, Eddie Nketiah scored. Um, Eddie Nketiah with a swivel shot. He started because Jesus was injured. So that's another thing where Nketiah started and he scored for the first match of the season. Everyone was aghast when Nketiah saying that, yes, it looks like he's finally fulfilling this potential. He's finally um paying back Arteta's faith and trust that Arteta showed him but once again he kind of drift away in few matches um in and out uh, um in the matches when he plays so for me we we started good but we see that we fell off the um off the boil and not to say that we won't get back onto good form because last match we won um five nil so it's like we're getting back into 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 the gear of things but that's potentially the, the wrong time because we see that Kevin De Bruyne is back and um, Holland is going to be back and they're going to be firing and um, Liverpool is firing. So it's not going to be an easy season going ahead, but there's also reasons for, uh, for us to be happy and we're going to get into those reasons in this video. So this was the formation against um, Nottingham Forest and we see that um, Timber was in the team. That's the first thing you notice. Timber was in the team and boy oh boy, everyone was happy with Timber being in the team, but he got substituted um, being getting off injured and we see that that's, he's been injured ever since, right? So um, Thomas Party at right back, um, once again, Thomas Partey, we haven't seen him much this season. Probably about three matches for the five, four, three to five matches for the whole season in all comps. And we ain't seen him since. Um, so uh, the starting left back and the starting right back is missing. And we see Benjamin White and Saliba in the middle. And it's the same um, team going forward as what I said that um, Jesus was injured. This is why Enketia was holding the fort. But um, the, the positive for, for the match upcoming match on Tuesday is that Thomas Partey is back. He's back in full training and potentially we might, we might see him against Nottingham Forest. He might start with Declan Rice in the centre of mid. Um, I would love to see a formation like that. I would love to see them starting together, getting that chemistry, getting that, that, that bond together in the centre of midfield because I believe that with Thomas Partey, we can win the Premier League. That's why I ideally wanted, um, if I would want to sign us um, play this, this January, it would be Onana because I want someone to accompany Declan Rice in midfield. Jorginho is very good, but for me, he's not quick enough. He's not athletic, in, uh, athletic enough um, to get back into position after he's been attacking or he's not uh, um, fast enough or has enough stamina to cover the entire pitch just like what Declan Rice does and Thomas Partey when he plays so that's why I wanted Onana but if we can have Declan Rice and, 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 and um, De um, Partey sitting in, in midfield for me that's an easy win so that's one of the um, good signs coming into this match on Tuesday is that we've got Thomas Partey fit now during Timber he's not far off either we see him training um, it, it's not mentioned that he's going to be uh, it's, uh, um, it's been mentioned in a few reports that he's going to be ready for February but not January I haven't seen a report that's saying that he'll be ready for January but basically we're in February already um, we're a few days away from February so hopefully um, for the next two matches we can be looking at um, and um, basically um, anticipating a start from or even a substitution getting back into the swing of things from um, Duran Timber because I believe firmly that when Duran Timber comes back when Thomas Partey comes back we can go toe to toe with City and Liverpool for the rest of the season barring no one else get injured if no one else get injured I believe in 
in this team, the first team that we have to be challenged to the very end and potentially nipping a trophy if we can't nip um, Champions League and the Premier League. Perhaps we can win the Champions League because as I'm saying that for me, Champions League is, is easier to win than the Premier League. Now, on this day, we had 15 shots uh, compared to Nottingham Forest 6. Um, they, we had um, 7 on target and that's not bad compared to the, 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 um, the form that we've been having f throughout the season because um, that's almost half. We've, we've, we've got almost half shots that we took on target previous matches for the past i don't know lots of matches um we've been playing we've been getting less than um 50 percent we're probably getting about 25 percent or less shots on target compared to all shots that we've uh, we've had um not to know for us to two and um, possession we have 79 percent compared to this 21 absolutely massive and basically that that's been carrying out throughout the season not in the same level because this is what i'm saying that we can't really criticize Arteta for the way we've been playing um, entirely because you have to understand that he came up with a plan, he came up with a structure and that got hit, right? That structure got hit, took a big hit in the season when Timbo got injured and Partey got injured. So we have to cut him a bit of slack. Now, it's not the fact that we're cutting him slack because... Um, even though he's been performing bad, we have not been all that bad because we're, we're in thir um, third place. We're in third place, about five points from Liverpool. So, so we're not that bad, um, especially in, in the the fact that Arteta's first team, his first um, intentions, his first um, strategy um, strategy that he had coming into the season got destroyed, and he had to basically um, evolve or he had to adapt as to a certain extent um, how he wanted to play. So we have to give cut him a bit, a, a bit of slack. Um, Duran Timo was going to be a key part of our season and he's injured. Thomas Partey, I believe the same, and he's injured. We've had 769 passes compared to this 200. Um, we have 90% um, pass accuracy compared to this 68, um, 12 fouls each. And this is it for me that we've not been that bad, man. We, we need just need to relax. We need to start taking one game at a time and focus on the positive. I know the negatives is always, will always be there. And we'll always get we, our emotions sometimes get the better of us and not allow us to see clearly. But we just need to take a step back and evaluate it from a neutral perspective. Now, this was the average position on the pitch we see. And this is it. This is another reason why I said that, listen, we need to cut Arteta some sack because I see a different formation what we've been playing all season compared to the first match of the season, right? Or the first, yeah, the first the first match was different and the second match since, um, or the second or third match since Timber's been injured, he had to switch it up and the, after Partey's been injured, he had to switch it up and then every time someone get injured, Martinelli was injured, for, he had to switch it up and so um, we, we don't take this thing into consideration. It's not easy to be competing with the biggest teams in the world, in Liverpool and, and Man City, and not having your best players available all the time. And um, your strategy is getting blown through the window. You have to keep on adapting. It's not easy. So, first thing we see that Saliba, number two, and ben, Benjamin White is playing a two at the back. They're playing a two at the back, an average for the first match of the season. And then we see a three in midfield, which is Timber playing the left side, um, party, uh, um, Declan Rice in the middle, and party on the right. Now, we see another three above, which is um, Odegaard on the right, um, and, and, and um, Kai Havertz playing centrally, and then Mart uh, Martinelli playing left. And that's, that's deep, because um, basically Odegaard is playing right-sided um, attacking mid. Um, Kai Havertz is playing centre forward and for me he was playing a bit second stri second second striker which Enketia playing striker and, and he's like playing second striker so this is why sometimes you find him find him in the box and Enketia can sometimes swap roles and drift in that position and if Jesus was playing them swapping position it would be seamless because Jesus can play anywhere on the pitch especially in attacking mid he's got the ability and you see Saka and, and um, Enketia playing further forward on the two so this formation was a 2-3-3-2 three, 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 Two, three, three, two, and look at the zones with, with these black lines uh, marking the different zones. So on the on the on the, on the left hand side, you see um, Benjamin White playing, attacking and defending. Thomas Partey supporting Benjamin White. Um, whether he, when he attacks, Thomas Partey sits um, and they overlap together and play and invert together at the same time. Odegaard, the same thing. Partey um, do the same thing with Odegaard. Odegaard do the same thing with Saka. So these four on the right and the left hand side, they gel proper um, for the first match of the season. This is where you see Saka had the opportunity to cut into the left uh, and have a shot on goal because um, there was so much player that's bombing forward on, on, his, uh, um, on the outside, creating space, um, creating overloads and even in, in, in the inside as well. 
he was afforded so much space because there's so much player on that side. Now, in the central areas, you see um, Saliba, Declan Rice, um, Kai Havertz, and Nketiah in that central row, and that's another um, um, dominating area in the pitch for us in the first match of the season. But on the left and right hand side, now um, it was slightly less congested, and that's not bad because. Saka can play intricately, so he can have about five men around him and still play properly. Odegaard the same, um, Partey the same. But when you take a look at Martinelli, Martinelli needs space to run in. And if, if you've got loads of player on that side, it's going to obviously trigger the defence to get loads of player on that side to cover it. But if you've got most of the player drifting over to the left-hand side where Saka is and Odegaard is, and most of these players trying to mark them, Saka and Odegaard and Partey has the potential to oh, to get out these these um, this situation, these tight marking, and then spread the ball wide now for Martinelli to have a run at the fullback. And for me, that's a brilliant. These are the things I'm saying. We don't notice these things because we get emotional. But when you take a look on the graphics, when you take a look on the stats, when you take a look on the charts, man, it shows you that listen, Arteta had a specific game plan, but we're missing Timber because Timber we could have that because why? Timber is a very effective defender, very, very good, aggressive, strong, um, very good interception. He's got speed, he can get back. So we didn't have to worry about Timber and Martinelli only on that side. We could have trust both of them. Arteta could have trust both of them and said, listen, you can take the side. I believe in you, Timber, that you will get back in time. You're good enough to take, um, because Timber take on Man City. Man City could not beat Timber. Timber was that good. I, I mean, community show, a match before this one. And Timbo was up for it, right? So Arteta trust Timbo to only be him and Martinelli on that side. Martinelli trust Timbo enough to say that, listen, I can bang forward knowing that Timbo is good. I don't need to keep defending and protecting him. However, when it's Zinchenko, yeah, Martinelli or Trussard had to keep going back to help um, Zinchenko more than what they would for Timber. So these are the different um, dynamics that we have lost by Timber being injured and Thomas Party being injured that we don't quite see um, just by looking at the images or the videos in the match. So for the last 10 matches, we see that um, Nottingham Forest, they've not they've been having quite an okay campaign in the last 10 matches. And when I say okay, you might think, what are you talking about? They've got they've got four losses and three draws. They only got three wins. Aim me out, aim me out. Half of that I don't count. Half of that, the first half, which is against Fulham, which is against um, Wolves, which is against Tottenham, which is against um, Bournemouth, I don't count those. Those are um, basically three losses and one draw. I count the, the, the matches coming forward now, which is against Newcastle, was a win. I count the five coming forward now, which is Newcastle, we, uh, they got a win against Newcastle, they got a win against Manchester United. A draw against Blackpool, and then uh, the replay, a win against Blackpool, obviously that's the cup competition, and also they, they lost against Bedford, but that's a very difficult match, that's, that match is, is kind of tricky because they got a red card, and we're going to get into it. So this is the reason why I say I don't count these matches, so when you look at the loss against Tottenham, right, they lost against Tottenham, um, 2-0, and Tottenham even got a red card, let's take a look into the match stats, um, you see Tottenham having two goals, right, and they having none, when you take a look at the lineups now, Who's the manager? Cooper. Cooper is the manager. Now, let's take a look on the previous matches now. After that, matches after that. Now, the match after that, the manager is Nuno. That's when they sacked Cooper and now Nuno take over. And you might say that this is still, it's still a loss, but look at this. Bowl, bowl, um, um, Willie Bowley got a um, red card in the 23rd minute. Before anyone scored in the goal, um, Bowley got a yellow, a red card. Now, even up with the red card, with the one of their best centre back, if not the best, arguably their best centre back, they still got the first goal. Elanga for scoring in the forty seventh minute. Then Bournemouth got one. Um, Solanke scored the first one. Then Solanke scored the second one. Then it's two one, right? Then Chris Wood scored another one, which is two two. And then they got a last minute winner in the ninety fourth minute. Last minute winner. So considering they've got the centre back, one of their best centre back if not their best um, defender, got red carded and they were still able to bring Bournemouth with a very good unformed Solanke to the Briggs of almost drawing. For me, that's a very good start. Now, that's the first match of, of, of uh, Nuno's reign, right? Now, take a look at the second match of Nuno's reign. Isak scored a penalty. They beat Newcastle. We know that Newcastle is no joke right now. Um, Newcastle has beat PSG. We can always make references that Newcastle beat PSG. And... Nottingham Forest slapped them 3-1. 
comfortably beating Newcastle. Newcastle scoring the first goal, but then after that, Chris Wood with a hat trick against Newcastle. You can see that it was not just they've played very well. They had 15 shots compared to Newcastle 19, and um, they had six on target, so they were very deservedly of that win. The only possession they were lacking in 38 percent per possession, but they deserve that win according to the stats and according to the scoreline. Now, when you take a look, who's next? Manchester United. <laughs> Manchester United. Rashford scored with a 78 minute. But before that, they took the league. Dominguez scored and took the league. And then after, in the dying eight minutes before full time, Gibbs White with the winner. So, once again, when you take a look at shots, they had eight shots compared to United, eight not bad comparing to um united especially comparing to united two on target so um, possession 45 very it passes uh, 300 and all close to united so that's what i'm saying that's this is nuno uh, um, um in charge as well they beat united so when we take a look at the stats of nuno it's not that bad and uh, um cooper was the one that we beat in the first match of the season so that's what i'm saying that we've can't we can't really judge the same thing because for one some of our players are injured, but we've got a hope in the f sense that Partey is coming back. And the formation that I showed you, but we played against um, Nottingham Forest the first match of the season. They were playing three at the back. Nuno is playing four at the back now. So it's a different formation. It's a different manager. It's a different mindset the different players have in that team. Um, coming forward, they, they draw against Blackpool. Um, they, they win the, um, the, the replay. So this was the results of the Bradford match. Ivan Tony coming back, giving inspiration to Bradford. No wonder why they won, but didn't they scored first. Danilo scored, then Tony scored, um, then they got the the the, the second um, by Ben Mee, and then um, Nottingham Forest got their second. So it's two to Neil Mopé coming with the 68th minute winner. And look at the stats: 12 goal, 12 shots on goal, um, beating um, 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 Brentford with shots on goal. Um, only three on target though. They've 52 possession, they've got more possession than Brentford. That should not be taken lightly because Brentford is a very good team. Uh, having more passes than Brentford, having more passing accuracy, they, they were dominant over Brentford in this match. And that's a surprising stat because we all know that Brentford is one of these um, smaller teams that could be dangerous for bigger teams when we play against them. All of us are normally um, mindful of Brentford. So this is what I'm saying that, listen, so this is what I'm saying that we can't take Nottingham Forest for granted. We can't take them lightly because they've got the potential to cause a big upset, a big upset. But I'm confident in us going forward. I'm confident for the fact that we came back and we di we've dispatched uh, five against Crystal Palace. Um, even though Crystal Palace was not on the on form, they were not playing well but however we had to um, beat the team in front of us and we did comfortably as well so Nottingham Forest also has been playing good um, with a very good manager with a new mindset and this is going to be a very interesting match to see but I still believe we're going to win my prediction for this match is that we're going to win 2-1 and I'm going to say 2-0 no, because the last match I said 4-1 3-1 to 4-1 we won 5 no. And I, know, and I showed you that Newcastle didn't have any t any teeth going forward. Um, Crystal Palace, sorry, didn't have any teeth going forward. The striking force was depleted. No, 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 no. They will score. I'm going to say Nottingham first. We're going to score. I'm going to say 2-1 to Nottingham. 2-1 um, to Arsenal or 3-1 to Arsenal, um, like my previous prediction, because we see that Woods, their strike, their, their top striker has got more goals than our top striker is Saka, which is on six goal. Woods, I believe, is on eight goal. Woods on eight goals. Um... So their top striker has got more has got more goal than us. Um, Saka for assists, I believe Saka's got seven assists. Yes, their top um, um, assist um, is Alanga with six assists. Um, Gibbs White with three. Um, their top goal scorer, as well, I said, Chris Woods with eight goals. Alanga with four. Um, yeah, so their top goal scorer has more than us. However, Saka has got one over and their um, assists. But still, that's very close. That's ve so individual. The individual players. Our, even though we're, I believe that we're far ahead of them in terms of individual players, technical ability, um, tactical ability, and everything overall, I believe we have individual better players. But so far this season, they've been gr the individual players have been grinding. And this is why, even though they're not that far up the league, they've been performing very good as a team in parts. Um, we see now Nuno comes in, um, Chris Wood scored three goals in one match, a hat-trick. Um, that's why he's on eight goals in the season so far. So that's what i'm saying this is going to be a very interesting match individual players um now it's going to be down to a team effort as well as individual effort it's going to take an individual to inspire the different teams to go forward and win this match and i believe that woods we need to take 
big, big mindful of Woods. And this is where I would start two in midfield. I would have Declan Rice and Thomas Partey sitting in midfield. Kai Havertz being on the bench. Or they go play an attacking mid because... Woods is going to basically... Ch Woods is very big, very strong, very aggressive. I believe Saliba and Gabriel was good enough to um, to challenge them. However, I believe that um, Alanga, we need to be mindful of Alanga and Gibbs White as well. Whoever play on that left-hand side, we need to be mindful of them. Whenever Taiwo, Ta 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 Taiwo comes on, he's very strong as well, very aggressive. Um, and don't forget, Odson and Doi, they've got very good technical players. So we need to cover... The, the right backs, the left backs, and also the centre backs. We need to have the, those areas covered. And uh, we can only cover those areas with two centre mids. Two mid, um, mid midfielders that, that will be sitting and um, helping the defence. And Thomas Partey can do um, stay from deep and create those passing lanes, um, um, switching the balls and things like that. And even driving further up the pitch. And so does uh, so can Declan Rice uh, when he's in, um, in, um, interchanging and swap um, going forward. One sits um, and vice versa. So, so that's the video, guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comment below let me know what you think um this potential result will be considering um thomas party might be back um starting in this match let me know what you did what you think um the scoreline would be let me know what would you um have the lineup what if you were the manager what would you have in this lineup who would you have in this lineup um especially knowing that how nuno plays nuno plays very um entertaining football he doesn't sit back um and wait for teams to come onto him he likes to go forward as well so let me know your opinion in the comment box below. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share. Help me on my journey to a thousand sub. Goodbye, guys.